Good, Good to, to meet see you. you. Lovely day. Oh, mate, it's balmy. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's probably a, a, a bit of a different pace to your lifestyle you used to have. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I like this place better, though. Yeah, I bet. Honest. You've been an entrepreneur. You've worked at Twitter. Yep. You've worked at Facebook. I imagine that to be quite an intense, fast-paced lifestyle. Yep, yep. Busy, you know, that, that word. And because the businesses that I worked for were based in North America, so the day is actually about 21 hours long. And so I would regularly have to dial into some meeting at two o'clock in the morning, Sydney time. And because that was the right time, you know, for the North American part of my business. So tell me about your relationship with sleep and your relationship with your mental illness. Part of that relationship with sleep was that I didn't have it. I didn't have a very good um, sense of what it did for me. I didn't have a very good sense of what I needed you know, needed when I needed to rest and when I didn't. Um, I also had four little babies in five years during that time. So, oh wow! Yeah, so there so was no sleep at all. Wasn't, there wasn't very much sleep, and I, and I realised eventually that it just started to wear me down, um, and I just started to notice my mental health suffer more and more as I got less and less sleep, and there was more and more demands on me during the time when my body was like, "Dude, I just want to sleep," and if I don't get the sleep, I just start that spiral down into where I don't want to be. I start to get really defeatist, I start to get really angry, my interpersonal relationships all suffer. The complex PTSD represents itself in my head as, as nightmares, as flashbacks sometimes which are quite full on and that all just kicks off. As soon as I start to get a bit tired or I don't listen to my body or I, or I do these 20 hour days or somebody wants to have a meeting at two o'clock in the morning, I'm like, dude, I, I can't do it, you know. So in terms of, uh, for you, a treatment for mental health is part of it is just having a good routine of sleep. It, absolutely. I do use it as a medication almost. When I get enough sleep, I'm better equipped to deal with whatever mental health challenges I have in that day. You know, so many people push on and grind out these big long days, especially in my world, in the entrepreneurial sort of space, you know, people, you're told that if you're not doing that, you're lazy or you're failing or you're ineffective or you whatever. So there's this pressure to be busy all the time and it's, it's no good for me. So the, it's almost like a culture was saying that sleep is for the weak. Why do you think that sleep gets such a bad rap? I think that it, for a lot of people it means it's related to weakness. It, it's part of this busy construct that we've all kind of bought into. You, you know, if you ask anyone how, how their day is or how their business is or how work is, Oh, it's busy, you know. We sort of wear it as this badge of honour, and it's just meant that we, you know we we don't get the sleep we need because we feel like we have to be doing more and more, otherwise we're weak or we're failing or we're no good. You know, it's it's not that way at all. But that's kind of the construct that we've made for ourselves: is you must be working every waking minute. You must be checking your email on your phone at ten o'clock at night before you close your eyes. You know, and and I think too from a from a dad's point of view. That's not a lesson I want to teach my kids. If, if hard work means 20 hour days and not being kind to people and not being kind to yourself and not getting enough sleep, then I, I don't want to teach them hard work. I want to teach them smart work. So I'm a new dad. I've got a four month old. Congratulations. Thank you. Will I ever get my sleep back? No. <laughs>